absolutely no desire whatsoever to go to. A second kind of invitation is, I will accept it if nothing else better comes along. And we, we've all gotten some of those invitations too, right? And, 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 and you know, again, we play the game a little bit going, oh sure, I'll be there. Yeah, and then, then later you're thinking, oh, if nothing else better comes along, I guess there's nothing else to do, I'll go to church. That's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? And then we have those invitations that I will accept. And I, I pray this morning, as we look at this invitation, that we, we get really clear about where we stand on this invitation, because this is how this begins. This is the beginning of, of, of a... And Jesus is standing right in midst the whole celebration, and he gives this invitation. On the front of your bulletin, we put this, this, this picture. It actually would be one of the signs that was used for Jerusalem. Because in, in Jerusalem, still to this day, they, 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 they celebrate the festival of the booths, or the festival of the harvest. And literally what, what happened at a festival of the harvest, especially throughout the, it's an eight-day celebration, and every day it would start with the priests lining up with pitchers of water. And they would pour them down the, the temple steps as people would come. And it would look like just rivers of water flowing down. But the eighth day is the pinnacle of the, the whole celebration. Everybody knows it who goes to these. And, and in fact, if you can get online, you can see that it's still a celebration today. That they would, they would gather and the priests would gather and, and they would bring and they pour water across the altar that last day. It is at this very moment in John 7, 37. Remember in, in that passage as we read it is that the, on the last day of the feast, the great day, at this very moment, Jesus stood there and gives this invitation. In this invitation to all who are thirsty, come. Come. Let him come to me and drink. This is when the invitation came. And, and I, don't, I don't know where you stand, but God does today that I would imagine there's a fair number of people, and I, I just got a stack of $1 bills just to kind of represent something, because I would imagine that some of them, you know, when, when the invitation comes to us about am, am I, am I going to come and, and I'm, am I going to drink in deep of who Jesus is, that some of us may hang on to our pleasure, whatever it may be. And I, I don't know if I want to give that up. Or this, this power whatever it may be. I don't, I don't want to give it up. There may be some of you who come and, and there's this rock of pain, whatever it is, and, and I don't want to give it up. You know, when the invitation comes, it's like, am I going to lay these things down, whatever it is, whatever the hurts are, whatever the, the pains are. You know, there's multiple reasons why we deny the invitation. And, and, and you notice something is that he says, come and drink to take him in completely. But the fact is, there probably are many, maybe even here, that are too attached to their pleasures or too attached to something on this earth. Or maybe it's too attached to some pain or hurt in my life. You know, maybe it is, is I'll come and follow if nothing better comes along and, and waiting for that magical moment that's going to turn this all around. But you notice how Jesus says this if you look at this passage one more time, 37, when Jesus says, if, if anyone thirsts. The if is, am I going to choose to drop whatever that is and come to him? If I'm willing, and, and if I, am I going to relinquish those things and surrender those things? That's what is going to happen. And, and it comes down to this, I will receive. And I'll look at this picture and I, I will receive this gift and, and take it in its fullness. I would imagine, like I said earlier, that there's probably different positions for different people in this room right here today. 
And probably as you meet people, as you share the gospel with people, you'll find out that some of them I, I know sharing the gospel, inviting people to, to come and hear about the truth, inviting them to come to a Bible study, inviting them, you can tell in their faces that, yeah, I'm going to come, and then you're wondering, yeah, yeah they have no intentions of coming. Or, or some of them are going, well, I'll come if there's nothing else better. In fact, I have heard that sometimes. Uh, inviting them to a study or inviting them to, could I meet with you? Well, I'll do it if. You know, it's a picture of this. Here's the invitation. And each of us have to stand before our Lord and go, okay, am I stepping into this invitation and am I stepping into it in the fullness of what this means? And, and I, I pray that you hear very carefully what Jesus' words are to us. Because he begins, if anyone thirst, let him, and I want you to see this carefully, come to me. It is to come to him. John 7, 37, those, those are, and, and, and you know, here they are, they're standing in the midst of this ceremony, this great day, right? You, you know, here is the, the pinnacle. Probably every one of them, most of them have been to this ceremony many times, and they're waiting for this moment when the priests are going to walk by, and these rivers of water are going to pour across this, and they're going, and you can probably hear the whispers of the people in the crowd going, okay, this is what they're going to do this. If there's a new person there who's never been there before because Gentiles were invited to this, and they say, watch this, this water's going to pour off of this thing, and they're sacredly saying this, and all of a sudden Jesus stands up and says, if anybody thirsts, come to me. Could you imagine how many people were there for this ceremony only? You know, we, we kind of make light of this around Christmas that a lot of people will come to a Christmas Eve service. And, and you know, we come into this and it was like, yeah, this, this is exciting. I, and I love the candlelight service more than I, probably anybody in this room. But if you come only for the ceremony, it's empty. It's empty. There's nothing there. See, it was for this very moment. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, and out of this heart will flow living water. I mean, you're going to hear that over and over and over because these are words that we must hear and must hear carefully. That we must turn from ceremonies. It is not that some worship the ceremony as instead of worship, worshiping the one the ceremony points to. You know, this, this last Friday night, it's, well, more, it's more Saturday morning, um, Boy, lock-ins go a long time when you're 59. i got to tell you, that's a long time. But some really awesome things came out of it. I sat with a young lady that one of the kids invited. And she had her Bible there, and we were talking about, you know, and I asked her, I said, when, when, when is it that you became a follower of Jesus Christ? And she immediately went to her ceremony. She immediately, you mean my ceremony of my baptism? And I said, well, that's an awesome thing. And we, had to, we ended up having a conversation about a ceremony of the baptism. But I said, when, when did you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Uh, please come into my life. When did you, and I said, when did you accept the invitation? And she was stopped in her tracks for a second. And she looked at me and she goes, you know, I had never thought of that. And she said it was, it was, it was months before is what she told me, that, that I, I accepted the invitation and I came into this. You know, a lot of us fall into the ceremony, those kinds of things, and it doesn't mean the ceremony is necessarily bad. But if we, we get so lost in the ceremony of it and that's where we get all the, there's no power in the ceremony. There's only power in the relationship. See, rituals are not wrong. Empty rituals are wrong. And you see, everyone was here in this point that we're looking at in this passage, this great day. Everyone was here. And, and I pray you listen carefully. Empty rituals, they replace, they, they obscure or, or make it unclear and distract from the relationship with Jesus Christ. External acts should never replace internal devotion to our King. Never. Jesus teaches us clear direction, and I want you to look at this. First is, we must come. We must turn from whatever it is, 
Whatever that is in our life, we must turn from it and come back to Him. Him. Just Him. Him alone. This act of turning, this action that I turn away and I come back to, I always point to the cross because it's a, for me and it reminds me of what was given to us on that day. And, and I come back to this. I, I must come to it. It's an action. And don't miss this. What he says next is drink. That you must drink. You must consume. You must take it in. And I want you to think about that for just a moment. Because what you consume becomes part of you, doesn't it? That you, and here it's very clearly that, that I, I must turn and I must come to Him and I must drink it in. It helps us understand earlier in, the, in chapter 6 when He says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. I must take it all and, and I, I must become consuming what he is telling me. You know, early in, in my walk as a Christian, I, I understood that I had a lot of mixed up thoughts, a lot of confusing ways of thinking, and a lot of confusing ways of believing and living my life. And, and I had to, to come to this and I had to start looking at, no, am I consuming what Jesus has given me? Have I taken it in? And I want to challenge you with that. I, I pray right where you're sitting right now that you stop and you examine and, and you look. In your Bible, if you turn over to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, I draw you to this passage often. Personally, this is something I do in my own walk personally a lot. I can't tell you how many times because sometimes it's daily and sometimes it's every week and sometimes um, there's more times than, than, than other times. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, I want you to see something. Because, you know, Jesus tells us very succinctly at the invitation... If anyone thirsts, come to me and drink. And, and here, here's what he says in 13.5. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realize this about yourself? And look at this, that Jesus Christ is in you. In you. And, and I would challenge yourself to think about, we're coming up, we've got 40-some days left of this year. I don't know the exact number of days, just a few, half of a month and a, a few, another month. And, and, you know, as we come to this end of the year, examine yourself. Have you seen more of Christ in you? And I, I would challenge you just to, maybe on your bulletin right now, write down, how have you seen, as I examine myself before Christ, how have I seen more of Him in me? Am I hearing more of His Word, for example? Am I more forgiving with people I love and care about? Am I more aware of Him and His desires? Am I becoming more discerning in my, my decisions? Am I wanting to know Him more? Maybe it's I'm becoming more aware of how selfish I've been or how self-centered I've been, whatever it may be. But I challenge you to examine yourself. Do you see Christ in you? Because he says to drink, take it in. I would imagine that, that this could be a little unnerving if you've come to this point and you realize, wait a second, I'm not seeing a lot of Jesus in my life. That's telling you something, that you may have come to him, but you haven't drank that you haven't taken it in. That you haven't fully taken it in. You know, and I, I pray that as you do this, that you see something of Him in you. And if you're not, then I, I pray this morning is that you turn and you understand the importance of, I drink this in. You know, the reality in our culture today that many have come, but there's possibly the reality also that there's not a lot of people that are drinking. And I pray this morning the challenge is here because the invitation was here. Jesus standing there and says, if you thirst, come to me. Take it in. And Jesus doesn't stop here. If you look at 738, he says, he, adds to, he gives the invitation in 37, and now in 38 he gives the promise. He says, take the promise. There's a promise here. 
Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. First of all, as you look at this picture, out of this is that you will be satisfied, but the satisfaction will not be as the world has it, as the world communicates to us. It's not going to come to us in, in, in fleshly terms many times, although it might, but the reality is most of the time it comes in a spiritual fashion. It's not necessarily externally that I'm going to now have all the money that I want or have, have this hurt that I'll never think of it again or whatever it is that, I've, that I'm dealing with, whatever that issue. The satisfaction is not external, it is internal. And, and, and let me give you an example of this. I, I've told this story, but not completely before. I used to work with this, uh, a lady on staff at Kearney, her name was Darina. And, and Darina was, she loved children. Um, and, and it was, a, her office was down the hall from mine. And it was a steady run of children in and out of there. And some of them were adults who used to be children in her ministry because she'd been at it for a while. And, and she was a lovely children's director of ministry. Man, she was awesome. She just had a heart for kids. And, and she was just a big kid. And she was a joy to work with. However, there became such a disturbance between her and another pastor that as executive pastor, I ended up having to mediate many times. I mean many times. And, and, and it, it, it got ugly sometimes in those meetings because Darina was very blunt with him and said, you, you just drive me nuts. And, 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 you know, and, and, it's, and externally, she, she would say, I would just wish Lord, the Lord would take care of this problem. And, and the words that many times were going back and forth were, were, were pretty intense in this conflict. In fact, it was about this time of year that I remember coming to church on Sunday and I, I knew that the tensions were so high, but I went back to see in her office and she had cleared it out. She says, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. It was a hard Sunday. It was a really hard Sunday. <laughs> And I, I can't live with this battle anymore, and I can't, I can't tolerate this conflict anymore. And, and, and the more I try to expose it, the more it seems like this guy gets, gets whatever he wants, and it was, it was not pleasant. She went on, and she served in, in the capacity working at the children, or the, the faith Christian, the, the Christian school. And she, she served there. And then, then the hard things started to happen. She had a brain tumor. And I know the treatments were, were multiple times into Houston and all over the country trying to find answers to solve the problem, to find healing, and it didn't come. I remember my wife and I, actually just a few months before she passed, we went and visited with her, and it was such a, a blessing to see Christ so alive in her. But then you see this promise. This promise. There's, there was a switch in Darina in the last days of her life that she met with the pastor that she had so much conflict with and said, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me for being so hard? I was blown away when I went to, Sherry and I went to her memorial service. The pastor she selected to share the message at her funeral was that pastor. There was a switch. You want to see rivers of living water flow? Came from internal. The promise was bigger, and I, I pray you pay close attention to this, is that yes, we will be satisfied, but the nature of the promise is that we will be, be right with Him. That we will be right with Him. And, and I, I pray you listen to this very carefully because, you, you know, look at what Jesus says about this. That, let me read it again. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture said, has said, out of his heart or her heart will flow rivers of living water. See, the nature of this gift is not about that I get the satisfaction, that, but I will be a satisfaction to others for his glory. Let me say that again. 
The satisfaction means that now others are satisfied in knowing and seeing him through you, through your life. This means that you will now be Christ-centered, not me-centered anymore. I was blown away by the gift of that glorious gift, the rivers of life that flowed through Darina and that message. Yes, the believer is to be satisfied. But you know, I have come in over the years of walking in, in, in the, the fellowship with Christ and serving, you know, I'm blown away by, by just those minutes of sitting with people and seeing the glory of Christ coming alive in them. I had 10 minutes this last week with a man who, who had been following Christ, but really been following Christ on the shirt tail of his parents. And he heard the gospel. And he heard it clearly. And he heard rivers of life flowing through this. And I never tire of seeing that happen for people when they start to see the glory of who Christ really is. And the truth that he came and he died and all those who believe in him will have rivers of life. This is the invitation. It's not in the ceremony. It is in him. And you know, the reality about this truth is that there will be divisions among people when this truth is laid out. There will be divisions because of, of where everyone is at in this particular subject and where, this is, where they are in this invitation. Divisions will show up among people. And let me just read these passages again. Verse 39, we see that John is, is writing after. He, when he writes this down, he has the Holy Spirit in him. And he speaks of this time because at this moment at the invitation, the Holy Spirit had not been poured out until after he was glorified. 39 reads as this. Now this he said about the Spirit whom, <clears throat> whom those who believed in him were to receive. As, as, for as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus had not been glorified. Then he goes further. When they heard these words, some of the people said, this really is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, is this the Christ that come from Galilee? Has not the Scripture said that the Christ comes from the offspring of David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So there was divisions among the people over him. And some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him. Because we knew earlier, as it said, it wasn't his time. Truth is this. Truth divides. There was divisions. And when you share the truth, when you live in the truth, don't be surprised at the division that's going to show up around you. I would imagine that this Thursday that you'll be sitting around the table with family. And if you're like most families, that you know that there's some people in that family who have not decided to follow Jesus Christ. And there will be divisions. We're not to be surprised at this, that we see this division happen because of a person is sold out for Christ, it will, will ring to them as a, as a division if they're not in Christ. It's just like today. In fact, I, I visited with a woman who, who shared with me that in her family growing up, her father was so adamant about it, she stopped, that he, he stopped the family from going to church, that you will not go back to that place. You know, there's some places that division rings loud. Some accept portions of it. Only portions of it. And if you look at this passage, when it says, some said that he was a prophet. See, that's a portion of the truth. And actually what they were saying, if they said he is the prophet, here's what they were saying. They were saying that, okay, then Jesus is the one who's going to point to the Messiah when he is the Messiah. And i got to tell you, if you're only taking a portion of this in, you have troubles. In fact, you can probably only expect to have frustration. If you only take a piece of this in instead of all of it, you are going to have problems. Some acknowledge Jesus' claim, like in 41. It says that, yeah, some acknowledged it, but they were confused by it. See, here, here's the picture, folks. It comes down to this. The invitation. And the invitation is all of him. 
It's all of Him. Completely. All of Him. That's the, that is where every one of us, every one of us is called. You know, let, let me just share with you about a gentleman that I still have occasional an email from. I used to meet with him in Kearney. He was, actually, I, I've known him since I, I was a, a wrestler at Kearney High School. And uh, I used to, he was from another school and used to wrestle and, and he ended up working in, in the uh, agriculture industry and you know, owns a lot of land out there by Elm Creek and in various places through there. A big farmer, um, big cattle farmer. And, and you know, he asked to see me one time and, and I, I was really surprised to hear from him. Uh, when I saw him, I, I you know, got in the mood. <laughs> thought we were going to have a wrestling match here because we, we didn't really like each other. Um, and, and I was so surprised when I saw the, you know, I, I saw this on my schedule. I, I asked Janet that, that morning, he says, so who is this? And he gave me the name, and I went, ooh, you know, I, I don't know if I want to do this. And sure enough, I, he comes into my office, and, and, and this guy, he, he is doing exceptionally well. I've known about him for some time, and he was doing exceptionally fi- and financially. He's doing great. And, and he comes into my office, and, and he sits down, and he, he starts telling me what's going on in his life. He's, built, he's telling me he's building this, this million-dollar house. And I wow. I can't imagine, you know, this. And he was telling me all the things that are going. And then he also told me, he said he, he's married, but still, and then also has a girlfriend. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I says, and you've been coming to church. Yeah, yeah, it, great. <laughs> you know, and, I, and, I, and we started talking about this. But, you know, what was a prize, it's just almost like I could picture him. He was hanging on to this the whole time. He was hanging on to this. We would get close to this. Okay. Are you ready to surrender at all? Are, are you ready? You're thirsty. You're coming. But are you ready to drink? And you know what would happen was he'd make another appointment. And I, I mean, I did everything but put him in a headlock and told him the truth about what was going on in his life. I said, you are, you are a mess I said, you have to, got to lay this down. And so what he started to do was he started bringing me things. He, he brought me some of his choice cuts from a, from a butchering that he had. And then and I says, oh, okay. And then he, he offers me a wad of dollars. He just pulls it out and he says, I, I want to reimburse you. And I says, I don't want it. I don't know what you're trying to buy here. But I don't want it. And I told him, I says, you know what? Jesus doesn't need your money. Jesus has invited you to take him all in. And it's going to come down to this, my friend. If you do not lay this down and you say, I'm all in, I'm scared for you. When we moved up here, he was mad at me. Because we used to meet almost every week on Monday nights after recovery. He says, you know, he texted me one time. He says, how am I supposed to get all this stuff straight? I says, well, I've given you everything I can. This is up to you, bud. You know, and occasionally I'll get this text. He says, wondering how you're doing. But all I can see is still a man who's doing this. I know another man. You sat down with this man, you would hear stories like, like, uh, when you get to know him, he would start talking about, you know, he grew up in the Depression. And he would say, you know, I, I've spent years trying to figure this out. And then, then you start hearing his hurts and his pain, and it'd be like this cold rock came out, and you're holding on to it. About how he lost a farm in the Depression. And how unfair everything was. And how awful it was. And it was, it was awful, and how he barely got by, you know, and he, and, and he was holding on to his, his pain like it was so precious to him, like it was a diamond. And, and he would just sit there, and, and if, you, if you can imagine his pain was in this rock, it was right here. Look at this, smell it. Look, look at what I went through. He told everybody the same story. You know, when, when you'd meet some people that met him and stuff, yeah, did you hear the story? Oh yeah, you can't miss it. 
Here comes the depression story. Here comes how he lost that quarter. And then comes the story, that then, then once you heard that story, you'd have to hear about the next one when, when he lost his leg, uh, when he was in an accident, and he, and, he, and he complained about the guy that ran into him. It was an ice storm and hit him, and, and it caused a, a jolt in his leg, and he says that's why he lost his leg, not to mention, though, that he smoked for 50 years, and he had vascular disease, and he lost his leg because of that. Have you ever met people like that that just hang on to this? And you hear it over and over and over. It's my father. He heard the gospel. He'd hear the gospel. And he'd hear it. Yeah, I, I've heard all that. And I pray at the end that maybe he did accept that invitation. The reality is all I have is two squeezes to say that he did. But I want to leave you with this story. And I was so blessed by this this week. talking with my older son. He's been a follower of Christ. I remember his, his baptism when he was 13 years old. I, I remember all the trials that we went through growing up, having him grow up, and I grow up as well. And i got to share with you what, what it looks like and what a joy it is when you see someone all in. I had a conversation with my son this week about how, and he actually used those words, Dad, I think God's calling me to be all in. And how sweet it is when you see someone who understands, who've accepted that as thirsty, who's come and now drinks. And he starts to come back to the Word of God and he's taking it all in. And he's saying, you know, I don't know where God's leading, but I'm going to trust Him. And I don't know where this future is going to be, but I, I'm, he says, you know, I'm 33 years old and I'm going forward and it's going to be all Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. Just like on that day, that great day when Jesus stood in front of everybody there waiting for this ceremony. If you're thirsty, Come, drink. And I pray this morning, if God is speaking in your heart that you've not come, let today be the day that if, you, if you've got a hurt or a wound or if you've got something that you prize in your life more than Him, that you lay it down, whatever it is, Jesus first. Whoever's thirsty, come. Drink it in. Father, I thank you for your words. I thank you for this incredible invitation. Lord, I, I thank you for the truth that, that the promise that you told us that we're going to become rivers of living water that's going to pour through us. That we will be reflecting the truth of who you are in our lives to others. Lord, I, I pray that if there's any in this room who have not laid this down, whatever it is, whatever's in the way, that it be this moment right now. They come and they drink and drink deep. Lord, I, I pray you guard over this message for us in our hearts as we go out this week. As we go into Thanksgiving, I know, Lord, there are some in this room who are going to have an empty setting at their table, missing something. Lord, I, I pray your hand of comfort on them. I pray your, your hand upon them to, to remind them of what, that you are uh, with them. Lord, that we will let nothing, nothing on this earth get in the way of being all in. Father, I just ask that you will guard over that message in our hearts this week as we go out. We thank you for the way that you're moving, drawing people to yourself. Lord, I thank you for the growth of coming to know more and the promises of reminding us as we examine and we see you in us. That's a gift from you. We praise you for it. Lord, we, we ask this all now in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. Enjoy his grace today.